Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Mark's Monday Minutes in Portland Real Estate. It is the week of Monday, March 13th. Now later this week we're all gonna, on Friday, so many people are gonna be wearing green, but today I'm wearing yellow because it's the color of the daffodils that are enduring all of that deluge of rain. Can you believe it? Yes. Okay, so this week there are three takeaways from the video this week. First of all, Silicon Valley Bank, SVB. It is a specialty bank, they're making the news. Second of all, mortgage rates will improve, good news for buyers and also sellers. And point number three, buyers activity continues to move forward and the sellers are keeping pace. This is an improvement. Okay, let's get into the numbers. First of all, this week, 2,569 active listings available inventory in the Portland metro market. That's just a slight tick up of 70 homes from last week, which is great because it has been declining for so long. Last week we saw an uptick as a result of the previous week, two weeks ago when we had the snow, it just moved a few more listings forward. Today we're just finally starting to see it tick up. Maybe, maybe we're starting to see the start of spring inventory increase. Fingers crossed that we are. There we go, fingers crossed. Second, new listings this week, 408 equally offset by the number of pending homes this week, 406, pretty much par. The number of sold homes in the last week, 297. Those were homes that were put in contract 30 to 40 days ago, back in the end of, July, of January when things were really starting to get active and buyers just jumped on any available listing. Now the number of homes that have had a price adjustment, this number continues to fall as the homes that have already had a price adjustment in the last 45 days, They've already had a price adjustment. We've jiggled that bait in the water and the fish, the buyers have bit, and these homes are coming off the market. So the number of homes in the last 45 days that have had a price adjustment has already, is decreasing. The number of coming sold homes, we're at 28 homes that will come to market in the, last, in the next 21 days where agents have preloaded those into the system. I can take a look at them and if you'd like a preview, let me know, send me a message, text message, phone call, I can get them for you. The number of homes sold in the last 30 days, 1,441. Tracking on that statistic that everybody else uses because they use the only the one statistic, oh, we've got 1.78 months of inventory. Well, hopefully I'm giving you a little more than just one little data point. I'm explaining the larger perspective, maybe filling in a few more of the gaps. Now, as for the homes with a four car garage, there are 90 homes on the market right now, 24 of which are under a million dollars. In the last week, this is 13 new homes of which five were under a million. That means the other eight were above a million dollars and you would expect a million dollar plus home to have at least a four car garage or larger, sometimes even larger. There's a couple out there, in fact, with spectacular garages, really nice ones, that's for sure. The number of pending homes this last week, oh, sorry, the number of you know, new homes with a four car garage was 13. The number of pending homes, 11, six of which are under a million dollars. The number of sold homes in the last week with a four car garage, one, and it was over a million dollars. Okay. That means just, again, four or five weeks ago, that's when the house went under contract. It's now finally pushing through. The number of sold homes in the last 30 days with a four car garage, 12 of which five were under a million dollars. All right, now we get to those three takeaways. As I mentioned, first of all, Silicon Valley Bank, SVB, it's absolutely making the, the news and it's been hitting since Thursday, Friday over the weekend. We've heard of a second bank. And so I'm making this recording at about, one, about two o'clock on Monday. Maybe the news will change. What is important to realize is Silicon Valley Bank is a specialty bank. They serve certain clients outside the norm. They are, don't represent the entire banking industry. They're a portion of it, but not the entire industry. It's like judging the entire automotive performance world on whether it be a Porsche 911 or a Yugo, two very different perspectives, and yet they're all modes of transportation. Now, Silicon Valley Bank, as I understand it, as I'm listening to the economists, they went under they had to file for protection because they made several long-term investments, which is normally good in the banking industry. However, their clients are short-term clients. They're venture capitalists, they're speculation. These are people who get in and get out and get loans for small amounts. It's like an, AR, like an adjustable rate mortgage. You're only going in for seven to 10 years at the most rather than a 30-year perspective with your full mortgage. So as a result, their clients are more volatile in needing their money, whereas the Silicon Valley Bank was perhaps doing 
making the right decision and investing for the long haul. But then like, it's a wonderful life that suddenly there's the rush in the bank because these clients need their money, it's put away in the long-term investments. Normal, regular banks, much larger banks, much more mainstream banks, have a regular mix of long-term and short-term investments and are able to weather the storm. Now, how much this is, how much is occurring within the banking industry, as with everything in the media, it's getting a lot more attention. Just because it gets attention doesn't necessarily mean it's good or bad. We don't know, but something to watch. Now, second of all, because of this uncertainty in the, bar in the banking area, this is actually good for mortgage rates. Why is that? Because as if, if investors are cautious about where the money goes in the banks, often we see a flow of months, as I've been told by economists, flows into bonds. Well, bonds are a good long-term investment. The opposite of that are mortgages. Those are another long-term security. So if more money is going into bonds, then mortgage rates will drop as a way to pull that money back into long-term securities in the form of mortgages. So I predict this week we're gonna see a decrease in mortgage rates. Now, how much? I don't know. I'm a bear of small brain. I don't know. But we suspect that mortgage rates will improve this week according to two of the podcasts that I listened to, one this morning and one on Sunday. Now, that said, those who will benefit, most likely those with the higher credit scores because the banks are always looking for security and less risk. So something to consider. Finally, third week, as I've said, buyer activity continues to move forward and now the sellers are starting to keep, to keep pace with them. Again, we had just as many pending homes as came to market, so the buyers and sellers are both working together at the same speed, at least running down the same track in the same direction, whichever way it is. That's good. All right, that's it. I've hit the seven minute part the seven minute mark. Have a wonderful week. Whether you wear green or orange on Friday, it's up to you and you'll know a little bit about the history. Have a wonderful St. Patrick's weekend. We'll see you next week.